In a precision tree decision analysis, the default criterion for choosing the best decision is expected value. With the expected value criterion, precision tree calculates the expected value for each strategy and identifies the best of these with its true labels. Researchers in the decision analysis field have argued that this criterion is reasonable for most people, at least when the consequences, monetary or otherwise, are not too large. For example, if a company has to make many similar decisions over time, the expected value makes sense because it represents a long-run average. In this case, the company can afford to lose some of the time, knowing that it will come out ahead in the long run. And even if the current decision is a one-shot deal that will not be repeated many times, researchers have argued that the expected value criterion is still reasonable most of the time. However, the expected value criterion is not the only rational criterion to use when making decisions, especially those with large consequences. Consider the decision tree shown here. A person can enter into one of two gambles or not play. In the first gamble, the person wins $1,000 or loses $100 with probabilities 80% and 20%. In the second gamble, the person wins $50,000 or loses $10,000 with probabilities 20% and 80%. The expected values are $780 for gamble 1 and $2,000 for gamble 2. And of course, the expected value for not playing is a sure zero. So it isn't even close. Gamble two is clearly best in terms of expected value. But how would you act? In gamble one, you have an 80% chance of winning $1,000, and the most you can lose is $100. In gamble two, the odds are four to one that you will lose $10,000. Of course, if you win in gamble two, you win big. You might act according to expected value and choose Gamble 2, but a lot of perfectly rational people would choose Gamble 1, preferring to avoid the big possible loss. A few people might even prefer not to play, arguing that $100 is more than they can afford to lose in their current financial situation. For decisions like this one, Precision Tree provides an alternative criterion, expected utility. A utility function encodes a person's feelings toward risk. Everyone prefers more money to less money, but most people value each extra dollar a little less than the previous dollar. Therefore, utility functions are almost all shaped like the curve you see here. The horizontal axis represents monetary losses and gains, and the vertical axis represents utility. The function increases from left to right, because people prefer more money to less money, but at a decreasing rate. This latter feature, called concavity, implies risk averseness at least for large gains or losses. Admittedly, there are a few people with utility functions that increase at an increasing rate. These are called convex functions. These people, called risk takers, simply love the thrill of possible large payoffs, regardless of any expected value arguments. In either case, concave or convex, utility functions are usually close to a straight line in the middle. And for these moderate dollar values in the middle, the expected value criterion makes sense. To use a utility function in precision tree, you first build the tree in the usual way, as you see here, labeling it with monetary gains and losses. Second, you choose model settings from the settings drop-down list and click the utility function tab in the resulting dialog box. Check the Use Utility function, choose one of the two built-in utility functions, exponential or logarithmic. I will discuss only the exponential option. The logarithmic option is similar. Choose an R value, as I will discuss shortly. For now, I will choose 100,000. And choose one of three possible displays expected value, expected utility, or certainty equivalent. For right now, I will choose expected utility. Precision Tree automatically changes the tree by 1. Converting each monetary value to a utility value. 2. Calculating and showing expected utilities. 
and three, indicating the best decision as the one with the largest expected utility. As you can see, the best decision now is Gamble 1. Its expected utility, about 0078, is better than the utility from not playing, which is zero, and the expected utility from Gamble 2 is also lower, about minus 0 0.0055. The person with this utility function is willing to sacrifice some expected utility to avoid the big risk with Gamble 2. The R value in the utility function is very important. R stands for risk tolerance. A person with a large R value is more willing to take risks than a person with a smaller R value. This is usually because people with larger R values have more wealth so that they can afford to take bigger risks but this isn't necessarily the case. Some people are just naturally more willing to take risks than others. For this particular decision, the R value would have to be near 225,000 before Gamble 2 would have the largest expected utility. By the way, you can reference the R value in a cell as indicated in the following dialog box. There's where I could reference it. I could put an R value right here, for example. This makes it easier to test the effect of different R values in the tree. For exponential utility, the R value represents a dollar amount. If you want to approximate your R value, you can use the following decision tree. If you don't play, you don't win or lose anything. That's one option. If you gamble, you either win R dollars or lose R over two dollars. So these cells reference the possible R value up here. And the winning or losing is based on the flip of a fair coin, 50-50. Clearly the gamble is always a good one from an expected value point of view. But if R is too large, you will probably not want to play because of the large possible loss. Your R is the value where you are indifferent between playing and not playing. Getting back to the original decision, I will finish by discussing the two other display options, expected value and certainty equivalent. If you use a utility function, but display expected values, as I have done here, you will see the expected values on the tree, 780, 2000, but the best decision will be chosen on the basis of expected utility. This is illustrated here, where Gamble 1 has the true indication, despite its lower expected value. A more interesting option is to display the certainty equivalents, as I will do now. A certainty equivalent is the sure dollar amount the person would be willing to trade a gamble for. For gamble one, the certainty equivalent is about $779. For gamble two, it is about negative $543. Now remember that the expected values for these two gambles are $780 and $2,000. The risk averse person is willing to give up only $1 in expected value to avoid gamble one, but he is willing to give up 543 plus $2,000, or $2,543, to avoid gamble two. Specifically, he is willing to pay $543 to avoid a gamble that has a positive $2,000 expected value. If this sounds unrealistic, just think about your own situation and the insurance policies you buy. It is basically the same principle illustrated here you are willing to pay for insurance to avoid a big possible loss, even though you know the insurance company is profiting from your risk averseness.